What would we have to deter China? In my opinion, we have economic strength. China will probably have more military, bigger navies, more weapons, more missiles. They'll have nuclear. They've got space. They have a space station. They've got all of that. But what if they had an internal economic crisis because none of the major economies of the world were investing there, doing business there, creating jobs there? It would be the collapse of their economy that would be our best leverage. Well, well, this sounded a lot like an almost sinister plan or conspiracy in order to keep down China and to fight them economically, at least maybe even in a hot war. And while we hear lots of US politicians talking like that, um, I will explain in this video why I think uh, it's wrong to think the same way about the Trump administration that we might see in a second term this time and why this actually might be an interesting catalyst for Chinese stocks and in particular for NEO and EV stocks. I've got some news for that by the end of the video. So join me in this video discussing all of these topics. And I know politics, uh, I see it in the comments, uh, is quite emotional. And, you know, this is not meant as an endorsement to who you should vote for. I'm just trying to analyze uh, with an objective and neutral mind here, uh, what could be the situation going down forward uh, for Chinese stocks, because frankly, they have been suppressed for some time. And now this um, video that I showed you in the intro introduction, you know, uh, that's how I think about the obsession of the Biden administration of trying to contain China. Um, some facts here, they have launched more entities, bans and sanctions than the Trump administration had in the past. Um, there have been so many um, alliances formed against China and uh, whatnot during this time of the Biden administration that I'm really looking forward to either change, uh, just something changing in US politics, hopefully, and it's you know, to be honest, just increasingly looking likely that it will be a new Trump administration. And now this week we had headlines like this. Uh, Trump is going to hike tariffs 60% on all Chinese imports and stuff like that. And that's why most people think the Trump administration will be bad news for China and bad uh, for Chinese stocks. However, I think this is exactly the difference of the Trump administration towards the current administration, which is that Trump is all about the domestic measures and um, the domestic goals and making America great again. I mean, yes, it's certainly nationalistic and so on, and I'm not a fan of MAGA, whatever, but you just need to know that this guy rather wants to end all of these global conflicts and the hot war in Europe, for example, and so on. And so the tariffs really, I think, are just a way of building up arguments in negotiations, in the trade agreements, and are more about uh, helping the domestic industry in order to bring manufacturing back home. To be honest, I'm quite skeptical about how well this could uh, just work out. Just some simple facts here. The Chinese economy and the exports have been growing, even though uh, Trump in the first term has, you know, slapped lots of tariffs on them and started a trade war. So um, I think it's just showing that those type of, um, uh, yeah, tariffs do, don't do anything rather than um, put it, uh, pushing up the inflation in the US really. And, you know, that's also something which they want to bring down obviously with interest rate, uh, interest rate cuts and so on. Uh, one fun fact you need to know here is that the econo uh, economic advisor will be our Arthur Laffer, which is, by the way, uh, one of the mentors and key figures for ARK Invest. So now you know why Kathy Wood and Elon Musk are such big proponents of Donald Trump. And um, it's not surprisingly very libertarian in their sort of economic policies and so on. And actually libertarians, they shouldn't like tariffs that much. They should be for a free uh, economy, free trade, actually win-win situations and uh, that where capital can allocate resources cheaper somewhere else in terms of labor costs and so on, then it should be done somewhere else. Uh, but definitely the Trump administration wants to help the normal workers in America. And so this way, I think, because they know, uh, you know, it wouldn't hurt the Chinese economy as much as the 
the U.S. economy in terms of inflation and um, and so on. Um, I think they will make in deals with China in the end, which will be beneficial to both sides. And this is something which we haven't seen happen under the very ideological um, Biden administration this time. And uh, yeah, this going forward uh, should mean that U.S. and China's relations might actually become quite better in reality than what we see in contrast to those sort of headlines where everybody thinks Trump is just generally bad for China. Now to this one very bullish aspect here for NEO in particular, and also another argument why I think Trump will not be bad and is actually quite pragmatic about it, is the fact that he has uh, reiterated his claim that he's inviting Chinese OEM to build factories in, Chi in, in the US. Uh, so he said that before, I also mentioned it in my last video that he's men mentioning this and um, now he's iterating it. Uh, so you can see it's going to be serious about um, Chinese EV possibly entering the US with manufacturing in the United States. And that's exactly what I think is acceptable for both sides. It's creating jobs in the US. It's making a, a battleground that is fair under the same conditions in the United States. The only thing is for the Chinese, they possibly need a couple more arguments to really invest a couple of billion dollars in the United States because also they know, you know, there might be another administration following up again. And then if they see hostil uh, hostilities again, like capital being and factories being seized and stuff like that, obviously that's not what they want, right? So again, that's even, even an argument uh, for the Trump administration to welcome the Chinese even more, maybe offer them some more incentives because otherwise they possibly don't commit as much as they really could. And so that's even in some way bad for Tesla, even though um, Elon Musk is going out there and endorsing Trump. At the same time, Trump mentioned that he is going to cut the EV incentives and that should be another negative on Tesla, actually. Um, however, Again, in this libertarian speak, um, Elon Musk is always uh, denying that subsidies are necessary for Tesla to break in even. And um, I agree with him on the take that the EVs in the long run will be uh, no competition for ICE cars in a sense that EVs will be coming cheaper and cheaper, more economical and are the better product in the end. Anyways, they won't at some point need subsidies at all. So agree with Elon Musk here. That's why he doesn't see Trump as a threat as well and why he is endorsing him aside of these, um, I think, geopolitical reasons as well, where I think many see how the current administration has been too um, hostile in its foreign um, policies and there have not been uh, enough deals, peace deals and so on. And uh, yeah, that should be about time to change. And I'm very much looking forward for that. I think it will mean uh, on the economics, macroeconomics indicator side that the US dollar will lose strength, interest rates will come down and we'll see more flows hopefully into risk assets and Chinese names are part of that. And um, yeah, that's uh, something to look forward to. Although I think the main bulk of people, the mainstream doesn't see it that way yet. People are afraid of Trump. People think Trump will be bad for international um, politics and for Chinese in particular. But I just can reiterate here on my channel, I don't think that will be the case, but I might be wrong in the end. Anyways, for me, this will be a huge catalyst for Chinese names in the end. Let me know in the comments what you think about it. And thanks for watching.